Hi, I'm Eric Kai, the chemical statistician. And today, I'm going to show you how to draw the Lewis dot structure for carbon monoxide. In an earlier video, I showed how to draw the Lewis dot structure for carbon dioxide. That is a simpler example, so if you haven't already, I encourage you to watch that video first. As always, we need to count the number of valence electrons in the constituent atoms before we draw the Lewis dot structure. So let's do that first. We know that carbon has four valence electrons and oxygen has six valence electrons. So the number of valence electrons that we need to account for in the Lewis structure is 10. Now, let's actually draw the atoms in the Lewis dot structure. Here's the carbon, here's the oxygen. As a good starting point, I encourage you to assume that the bond between the atoms is a single bond. That's not necessarily true, but it's a good starting point. That takes away two electrons from that count of 10. So there are eight electrons left to be divided between the two electrons, between the two constituent atoms. It would be a good starting point to assume that the number of electrons to be divided is the same between the two atoms. So let's assume that carbon gets four and oxygen gets four. So there are two pairs of unbonded electrons for carbon and two pairs of unbonded electrons for oxygen. So we've accounted for all 10 electrons, but neither atom has a stable octet. So we need to rearrange, rearrange the electrons so that both atoms have a stable octet. So the question is, which pair is to be moved into the bond? Well, you can start by thinking about which electron is more, sorry, which atom is more electronegative. And we know from the trends on the periodic table that oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. So we start by moving the electrons towards the bond because the oxygen is going to draw electrons away from carbon towards the oxygen. So now the oxygen has a stable octet, but the carbon does not. The carbon still has six electrons. So we need to move another pair of electrons from the oxygen to the bond. That will give us a stable octet for the carbon. The oxygen still has a stable octet, of course. So, as a final touch, it's a good idea to draw the electron domains as far apart from each other as possible. And by electron domain, I mean either the electrons in a bond or the electrons in a lone pair of electrons. So let's separate these two domains as far apart from each other as possible. And there you have it. That is the Lewis structure for carbon monoxide. If you'd like to learn more about statistics, chemistry, machine learning, machine learning, or math, or if you would like to get some career advice for your professional development, I encourage you to visit my blog, The Chemical Statistician. You can also find me on Twitter at ChemStatEric. Visit my YouTube channel to watch more video tutorials about statistics or chemistry. And also check out my new talk show, The Central Equilibrium, in which I interview guests about math, science, or economics. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope that you learned something useful today.